Salutations, one and all. Jurassic World Evolution 2 is right around the corner, and it's a game that I'm pretty excited for. I mean, the species profile is generating hype, the dinosaurs looking better than ever, and along with the gameplay we've been able to see, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good game, or at the very least, better than the first game that we're going to be talking about today. Because I think it's going to be a missed opportunity if we don't go and look back at the original Jurassic World Evolution, a game that I do not think many people are even going to go back to play once they get their hands on Jurassic World Evolution 2. It's going to be one of those sequel games. You know what I'm talking about. The original game comes out, then it gets a sequel slash remake years later that's basically the same game but better in every way. Sure, I could play Pokemon Sapphire, but Pokemon Emerald is just better in every way and it's basically the same game. Sure, I could play Smash Brothers on the Wii U, but why would I when Smash Brothers Ultimate is basically the same game but better in every way? I feel like Jurassic World Evolution is gonna fall into that category. People love going back to the original J-Pog game since it had its own unique stuff going on. I made a video about that game so you should definitely check it out. But enough of this hypothetical garbage. Garbage. Let's give this game one final hurrah before it sinks away into obscurity. <laughs> Talk about why it was so goddamn polarizing. I feel like it's a good starting point to go back to the beginning. So after the release of JPOG, there was kind of a dry spell for Jurassic games. I mean, sure, there was a few mobile games here and there, and then there was the Telltale games, but it was basically just nothing. Kind of. Like, that. that's it. There was just no new Jurassic games during that point in time. It wasn't until this small little indie film came out, I'm sure you've heard of it, Jurassic World, that reinvigorated the series, for better or for worse. And with the movie becoming a blockbuster success, of course Universal was going to keep making sequels. But they also wanted a few games to coincide with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Anything to increase that profit share. This is where Frontier comes into play, a game company known for making a bunch of tycoon games. Now, they've always had an interest in making some form of a dinosaur tycoon game, only to be approached by Universal, the company that owned the Jurassic Park and World IP. Holy shit, how the stars fucking aligned with that one? Now, some of you might be wondering what happened to Blue Tongue, the studio responsible for making JPOG. Well, they aren't a thing anymore. They basically just merged into their parent company, THQ. Yeah, the company responsible for that hit game, Cars GBA. <laughs> So yeah, that sucked, I guess. But with Frontier's past games being Planet Coaster and Zoo Tycoon, it seems like the IP for another Jurassic Tycoon game was in good hands. Now, I personally remember the hype being real. Another Jurassic Zoo Tycoon game? Oh, imagine the improvements of the game. Oh, they're releasing species profiles every week to keep interest? Oh my god! And then we got the game, and the initial release? Huh. This, uh... This seems, uh, scarily familiar. You know, as writing this script, I just realized that probably we need to lower expectations for Jurassic World Evolution 2 just a tad bit. I don't think the initial release of Jurassic World Evolution- Ugh, I need a better name, that's too long. Three? No, that's stupid. I don't think Jurassic Evo was bad on a release, but it definitely was bland, and dinosaurs weren't the right sizes. What did they do to you, Giga? You're so small! And overall, it's just- had issues. Now, they did eventually release some patches to try to fix the issues, but the damage was already done, and first impressions mean everything. But it's been a quite a few years since the initial release. They've also introduced DLC, which I will also be looking at in this video. With the exception of the Raptor Pack, because that's just cosmetics, and I do not give the slightest shit. Taking place on the Five Deaths, or Isla Mortez Archipelago, I don't know if I pronounced that right, each island has their own set of challenges that you need to complete and tackle. It's your job to build a functioning park on all of them. Pretty simple enough, and the gameplay of Jurassic Evo is pretty similar to all the other tycoon games that you've played. You click stuff, you move stuff, it's all the same things that you played before. But the interesting thing is that when compared to JPOG, you have more of an active role to keep your dinosaurs inside their enclosures. What I mean by actively is that each and every single dinosaur has their own requirements to keep them from losing their shit. The three main ones you'll be dealing with is environment, social, and population. If you don't meet their specific requirements, then their comfort level will go down, and if it goes in the red, they will stop at nothing to escape their enclosure, whether it be a simple gate to a fucking concrete wall. Holy shit, are you really bothered because you didn't have enough trees? Now, you can mess with their genetics so that they can tolerate more stuff. In fact, that's the magical new thing in this game, genetics. Dino DNA. Now, you won't need to make your own type of genetic stuff, no. There's already a bunch of predetermined genetics for you to choose from, and you can mix and match all you want. They don't really do much other than messing with your comfort or just a bunch of different other stats, like attack and defense, because that's in the game. The only stat that you'll be honestly paying attention to 
is the rating stat. Because depending on how many genetics you put into your dinosaur, the bigger rating it has. Now, not all dinosaurs are equal when it comes to their ratings. I don't think anyone's foaming in a mouth when they see a Struthiomimus. You can change the color of your dinosaur skin, but you don't really get to see what it looks like until after it pops out of the incubator. That's stupid. So I hope you like the color of your dinosaur because you can't change it when it pops out. Of course, you can't just load up on genetics and increase your ratings without suffering any consequences. Depending on how much you're putting in, its viability will go down. And then there's a chance that your dino can die while incubating. Uh, that kind of sucks. Was it all that time and money? I know you can get a refund for it, but you know, it still sucks. <laughs> Look at that dinosaur. He could have been the fucking president. But no, he pretty much just got mis- Oh, we're not going there. Now, you are able to work on multiple dinosaurs at a time, you know, law of averages and all that. But when it comes to actually releasing them, they come out one at a time, and that can be annoying. And when their comfort level is tied to their population or social needs, god damn it, it can be annoying. Let me release more than one single dinosaur at a time. But to bring it back a bit to the whole viability thing, you are able to give your incubator upgrades so that they can actually have a chance to live with all the animals you're jabbing into them. But you also don't need to have 100 viability to release any dinosaurs. Like in JPOG, the minimum threshold is 50%. And like JPOG, you get more DNA by going to dig sites and digging some fuss. Oh, Jesus! There's a lot more dig sites in this game. And thankfully, you'll never be restricted. Or rather, by the time you complete all the main islands, you'll be able to have every Every single dinosaur available to you. And the research is also like that too. Now you won't be able to get every single dinosaur or research at the beginning of the game, but once you progress you'll have more options and you won't be locked out of having any dinosaurs. Thank you. I hated that about JPOG. We may not be able to have certain dinosaurs on my save file, but of course if you decide to make a dinosaur that aren't 100%, they'll likely die and the lacking genome will make it more likely. So you need to keep an eye on that. Of course looking after your dinosaurs isn't the only thing you'll be keeping track of. Divisions will be your secondary focus. Think of this as a more optional passive thing that you can do throughout the game. Again, there's three categories, science, entertainment, and security. While you're never at any point required to do any of the missions or contracts in these divisions, it is highly recommended. Every time you complete a contract, this little progression bar begins to fill up. The more contracts you use, the more the bar fills up, and when it fills up, you'll be able to get certain rewards, such as new dinosaurs, or research options, or even a dedicated mission, where you'll get a good chunk of change for completing it. However, you want to try to maintain a balance act between the three divisions. Well, theoretically. How it's supposed to work is that if you neglect one of the other factions in the favor of one, then the other two will try to sabotage you, ranging from diseases, power outages, and opening gates to release your dinosaurs onto the park. Somebody needs to be fucking arrested! But they aren't that disastrous, and I feel they're more of a minor nuisance. Somebody made my dinosaurs sick? Well, time to get in the chopper or jeep and shoot some medication. Somebody release my dinosaurs? Well, get in the jeep or chopper and shoot some tranquilizer dots! The only one that seems to be an actual issue is the power and that's only because if all your power stations are in different locations, then it can be annoying to drive your jeep around and restart said power stations. But it really isn't that big of a deal. I frequently just focus on one division at a time, 100% completing the specific division, and then moving on to the next, and dealing with whatever potential problem arose. I do honestly like the divisions though in concept. It lets me do something while I'm working in my park. But those division messages, oh my god, they are very obnoxious, especially when I'm trying to get a good shot of my dinosaurs, and then they decide to pop in the middle like a fucking asshole. But yes, I did mention power. Unlike JPOG, a new power system has been added to the game. You see, almost everything in this game requires power. If you don't have power, well, it doesn't work. So you need to provide the right amount of power so your park stays functional. Now I don't think your dinosaurs are going to figure out that the power got turned off in their electric cages, but it will lower your ratings once you have a bunch of angry customers not able to go to their Burger Kings. But for other facilities at work, you also want to connect it with a path. This also includes hatcheries, and man is that frustrating. The game is oh so subtly trying to tell you, Yo, you gotta have 50 hatcheries for each dinosaur so they can look ugly as possible and take up space on your small island. And that's annoying! JPOG allowed me to put hatcheries anywhere, so if I wanted to have a breeding location away from my park, I was able to do so. Well, I can sort of do that now. I have to make an obnoxious path across the map in order to have my nice enclosure. I'm not against the path system, and I do quite enjoy the electricity system. It keeps you on your toes, but the hatchery is just a minor thing that is just... Why? 
The new rating system is a lot more cleaner and clear than it was in JPOG. You'll be able to figure out reliably what you need. It's split up into two categories. Oh my god, take a shot every time I said the fucking category word. Dinosaur ratings and facilities. Now the former is relatively easy to do. Just make an enclosure, get the right amount of dinosaur species, and boom, you got five stars on the dinosaur category. It's the facility rating that can be tricky to get behind. It's definitely more in depth than it was in the first game. You need to make sure this list is as close to 100% as possible, or else you won't be getting five stars. You also can't can't just start throwing random buildings around to fulfill your quota, you need to strategically place them around the park in order to get the benefits. Now this is where your management view comes into play. It will show you what buildings you need, and it's your job to place them there. This can unfortunately lead this to your park kind of looking a bit ugly, but hey, the profits, man! Who give a shit about feng shui when I can grab those sweet, sweet profits? And oh my god, the profits! You can actually get so much money from these buildings, you're able to get profits in the thousands, you actually feel like you're getting money from it. Once you have your facilities up and running, you won't be running out of money anytime soon. Sure, when you first start out, you have more of a budget, but once you get into the groove of things, you'll be making so much money! Holy shit, I can buy whatever I fucking want! Is this what it feels like to be Jeff Bezos? No. One of the things I truly do enjoy in the game, however, is Jeff motherfucking Goldblum reprising his role as Ian Malcolm. It is such a treat to hear him again, and he's just as cynical as ever. He's basically your guy throughout the game, talking about situations at hand, mentioning how the park is a fucking terrible idea, all the works! Though he's not the only actor returning, we also have the original actors of Claire and Dr. Wu returning, though Chris Pratt didn't reprise his role. I don't know what's up with that, but whatever. Maybe it was just too expensive or something? I, look, I don't know. And there's other characters too, such as Cabot, who, other than Ian Malcolm, is the most prevalent. I enjoy his character, though he can be pretty cringy at times, and I bet that's the point. Who's there? New contract. That's it. Period. <laughs> Each of the division heads also have a character, and they're the most bland as characters can get, oh my god. They all feel very generic. George Lambert is a no-nonsense security guy, but at the same time though, he also wanted to release a dinosaur in the public for a training exercise. What the fuck, Lambert?! There's also Isaac Clement, who is the entertainment head, who is surprisingly the most unentertaining character in the entire game. That's a fucking accomplishment. Then there's Dr. Tua, who has the most character in the game, but... That's only because I think she has a relationship with Dr. Wu. I don't know if it's some type of mentorship or what have you, but Dr. Wu is in this game and he, uh, it's kind of a fucking dick. He's kind of a dick. I guess it's a good segue to go into the DLC. But yes, DLC is in this game, and there's quite a few. Some of them offer dinosaurs, while others also offer dinosaurs and maps. Woo! Like the island, they all have their own challenges, but they're probably the closest thing to a story that you'll get into the game. For Dr. Wu's island, you'll be creating more hybrids, while you're also trying to figure out who is is attempting to sabotage your research. For players, it takes place after Fallen Kingdom. It's sort of a what if scenario, but you're basically tasked with rescuing some dinosaurs and making Sanctuary Island. And my personal favorite is Return to Jurassic Park, another what if scenario, where John Hammond throws away most of his character development in the first film and attempts to make Jurassic Park again. <laughs> oh boy. They're all nice, fun little side missions, but that's what they are. None of them really go in depth. Dr. Wu is pretty basic as it comes. You make hybrids, you make them fight, and yada yada. Yada. Look, when it comes down to it, I'm just not a fan of hybrids. Now, I've definitely warmed up to them in the past years, uh, but you know, they're all abominations. What can I say? They should all be destroyed. Ah. Claire seems more interesting. They're trying to save the dinosaurs, and it's a pretty honorable thing to do, and it continues her character growth from the last movie. They're Even if she fun. does sound like she's I'm reading a storybook instead of acting, I'm sorry. I, she just, her performance really wasn't jiving well with me. But hey, we have paleobotany now. That's neat, but oh my god. Return to Jurassic Park. This was a special treat. Being able to be in the same park, ride around in the same Jeeps, to see the similar locales from the original film. I got to ride the automatic Jeep. Oh my god, it's the Jurassic Park gate! Oh my god, I'm going through it! <laughs> I legit had the biggest grin on my face as I was able to get past the gate. It was a magical feeling. Honestly, sometimes just riding on the rides can offer some pretty great yes. moments. Like the gyrosphere from the world films, being able to get up and close and personal to these giant beasts, the sense of scale is amazing and breathtaking. I always try to make it a point to ride one of the attractions I made to see what my guests are seeing. I love the pointing out all the dinosaurs and hearing all the fun facts on the radio. This is immersive to me. This makes me feel like I'm on 
an actual safari with giant creatures towering over me. Look, it even has the underpaid employee that wants nothing to do with this job. Look at her. She looks miserable. Capitalism at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. Honestly, just looking at the dinosaurs is one of the best part of the game. Seeing them interact and socialize with each other. Alright, well, we're in the fifth annual Struthiomimus Gallimimus book club thingamajig. Gerald, did you, did you read Lord of the Rings? Alright, uh, no, I thought we were reading the FNAF book. Gerald, oh, Jesus, Gerald. Gerald. Oh, Gerald. <sighs> What? What? I, I, I thought we were ready. It's basically the same thing. You know, piece of shit, Gerald. You can even name your dinosaurs too, something that you couldn't do in the original game. Your name is now George now. You will now like it. Oh no, George, look out! Oh, god damn it! You are now Mjorge, eater of George. How does it make you feel, you dick? I don't think he cares. One gigantic problem with the dinosaurs, though, is that they act very fucking robotic. Like, if you look at them for too long, you can practically see the AI work its magic in its stupid head. Its running is especially egregious, because it'll run, then stop with a skidding sound effect, change its body position slightly, and then start running again. What? Sometimes it will do that multiple times and it looks so fucking weird. Dinosaurs can change their direction while running, you know. <laughs> the ragdolls can be pretty funny. One moment they're just standing there, and then the next you trank them, and then boop. <laughs> Hilarious. But when they're hunting, it looks so freaking fake, man. Like, you can see the animal it's hunting because it's the only one not moving and standing in the same position. Like, it's standing in place for a goddamn film shot. All right, Joseph the Lions, let's see, uh, scream. Well, that seems pretty good. Oh! 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 It wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't the same animation constantly. Like, were they not able to make more than one hunting animation? Why does the herbivore always have to die? I love my carnivores, but Jesus Christ! Why can't we see some animations of it failing to hunt? That would be pretty immersive. Carnivores don't always succeed in their hunts. Unless the herbivore can actually fight back and defend itself, it's going to die. Which, by the way, dinosaur fighting, concept-wise, I love it. In fact, it's in the original Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. But in execution, the dinosaurs just go in circles and bite each other constantly. Looks like it's a damn Pokemon battle. It's just a bit disappointing because while the AI in JPEG was dumb, it also felt more dynamic. Dinosaurs actually running away when being chased by predators. Animals having a chance to flee or scare off hungry carnivores. It's just surprising for a game that has so much quality of life upgrades, but also somehow has the worse AI than a game from 2003. <laughs> what the? But whatever, I can get past that, I suppose. Like I said, there's a bunch of quality of life upgrades, as well as ways to make your park look nicer. My favorite addition is being able to curve fences. Oh my god, thank you. I hated that about JPOG, where I would have this ugly box. Now, I can have an ugly oval. Ha! <laughs> Alright, I kid. Look, I never said I was good at design. But you can also curve paths as well and make some pretty neat design choices. Honestly, I really like this park I made in Claire's Island. Having a bunch of branching paths that also interconnect, it probably looks basic as fuck, but I'm still proud of it. And making streams of water so much more cleaner, instead of having to plop down an ugly square like in j you can make an actual stream. You can even decorate the ground with rocks and change the terrain with sand. They don't do anything and they're just for aesthetics, but being able to make a redwood forest for my T-Rex was nice. Look at you. Rexy, think you might have a nice forest just like when you were alive as a dinosaur. Now stop breaking my fence, goddammit! Fuck! Yeah, so remember when I mentioned the previous islands? Well, as stated previously, they all have their own challenges. Some ranges from map sizes to shitty weather to fucking both! Oh god, I hate this, Lapena. I think most of the maps in the game are fine. I enjoy the first two mainly because how big and open they were. Isla Takano is alright, but it's a bit too thin, but it's nothing I couldn't handle. Then we get to Isla Pena, where it's just so fucking tiny. I hate it. Why are we making a park here. It's not even the island, it's just a small map that they give to me. The hell? And then we get to Isla Sorna. Oh my god, I'm so disappointed in you. So Isla Sorna, or Site B for those that don't know, in the movies is where a bunch of wild dinosaurs are roaming around. So it's to be expected to see a bunch of random wild dinosaurs, like Paras, Mementosaur, but nope! 20 stegos and a spino. Way to drop the fucking ball. Whatever, free dinosaurs I can- Oh, Jesus Christ! What are you doing? Stop murdering each other! Oh my god, you're all stegos! What the shit?! The jeep is certainly fun in this game. It feels like it's an actual jeep. Look, it can even drift too! Whee! 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 Oh, whoa! 
shit. Uh, pardon me? But you also got to be careful with your Jeep, for other dinosaurs can destroy it. I guess territorial reasons, I guess, but fuck, man, they can be dicks. Like this stego herd. I'm minding my own business, and all of a sudden, this random herd just decides they want to fuck my shit up. Stacking my workers, back in my Jeep, the fuck. I'm glad I left them on that island to burn. Fuck you! But to take it back a second, you might be wondering why we are making a park on Site B. Well, where's the regular Site B mode? <laughs> there technically isn't one. Now, you're more than welcome to attempt to make some form of Site B, but there's no dedicated mode to it. Besides, with how robotic the AI is, it probably isn't that effective. Yeah. Uh, oh, but people will try. By golly, do they try. Like with J-Pog, you also have a bunch of people trying to make their own documentary style. But it must be a bitch and I have to edit, I'll tell you Where's what. This? Makes it all the more commendable, I believe. Now, there is a dedicated sandbox mode, mainly with Isla Nubar. You can basically do whatever the hell you want with it, especially with all the expansive settings. You can turn off dino aggression and make it so you have unlimited funds in order to make your dream Jurassic World. I always thought it'd be cool to have some big Savari adventure, though it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing, I suppose. But being able to drive around and see all these dinos, <sighs> It's breathtaking. You can even let your unpaid driver have a psychotic breakdown and drive up, down, and all around. Fuck this place! <laughs> so, what do you folks want to do? Drive into the T-Rex! But as someone who has done photography and film stuff, one of my favorite additions is the camera mode. Being able to pause the game and take pictures of the dinosaurs is one of my favorite additions. It allows someone like me, who's done some filmmaking, to make me feel like my degree wasn't entirely useless. But it might as well be because these pictures fucking suck. Some fading artists, am I right, folks? But there's so many good ways to take pictures to show off to your friends or just to have a screensaver. While it's really just a basic feature, there's no way to change the focus or aperture and whatnot, but sometimes you just need the basics. Lastly, because I can't figure out how to write this organically in the script, I'm writing this very late in the morning, I have to record this in a few hours, <gasps> is the challenge mode. Now basically the challenge mode is normal Jurassic World evolution, but now there's a time limit and you pay taxes. Or it's just the Hammond Foundation taking cut of your profits. Now by itself, it's whatever. However, the main reason why I adore this mode is just one simple thing. It's because of the randomized dick sites. It's very much like Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, but you'll still be able to get a chance to use all the dinosaurs if you choose. Now, when starting a map, you won't have your normal dinosaurs to pick from. It's all random. And this is the replay value that I want in a zoo tycoon game like this. And when I'm returning to this game, I'll always go back to this mode. Just waiting to be surprised at what dinosaurs I'll receive so I can try to make them work out in the best way possible for my park. It's sadly probably my favorite mode in the entire game and I don't know what that says about the game. Jurassic World Evolution is definitely a better game than it was when initially released. The DLC is definitely something that helps elevate the game and in my opinion with the DLC can make Jurassic World Evolution a better game than Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. But again, my opinion though is that a game shouldn't need DLC to make it good. And the base game is still okay if you like Jurassic Park and enjoy all the nice easter eggs and the loading screen, but I wonder if my enjoyment is because I'm a Jurassic Park fan or if it's actually a good game. Cause I'll be the first one to admit I'm hella biased. But when I do these reviews, I try to look at things objectively. And I think by itself, it's a below average to a fine game. But with the added DLC, it's a pretty good game. But that's the problem. Why would you want to pay more money on just a fine game? Especially when Jurassic World Evolution 2 looks like it's taking a good chunk of the problems from the first game, pitching them, as well as bringing back a lot of old features from the said game, and then expanding upon them. Unless Jurassic World Evolution 2 is an absolutely buggy mess, I feel like it's going to be a much better improvement than what we currently have with the first game. And I personally predict that there isn't going to be much of a point to return to the original Jurassic Evolution game. And that's kind of a bit sad. It's not going to be this classic where people will return to from time to time, or go back to see the utter shit show that it was, it was a fine game. But the sequel looks like it's going to be the same game, but better in every way. Now, do I hate Jurassic World Evolution? No, I love the game. And when I take off the objective shades, it's Jurassic Park, the franchise I love to death, where I'm able to make a park with 67 different dinosaurs and able to adjust their genetics and colors. It is no doubt an important game in this franchise, don't get me wrong, but I hardly see anyone ever coming back to this game. Maybe I'm being a bit too cynical. 
Perhaps people who enjoyed the second game will go back and see what the first game was like, but I guess we won't know until we get our hands on the second game. See if it truly kicks the original game to the curb, or begrudgingly go back to the original game because the next game is somehow bad. I think you know where this is going. Next time, I will be looking at Jurassic World Evolution 2. I encourage you to stop on by so we can put this Jurassic Zoo Tycoon game review trilogy to rest. Holy shit, what a bad line that was. I'm not changing it. Goodbye! Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more content just like this one. Specifically comment. I do enjoy responding to you folks. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, oh no! It's the Dilophosaurus, and he has a flamethrower! Ah!